Multiply in terms the harder way. In this case, the big difference is that we're going to have different bases that we're multiplying together here. So the first thing I want to double check with you guys is to make sure that you understand what 5 to the power of 4 actually means. So 5 to the power of 4 is like saying 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, right? 5 to the power of 4 means it's 4 fives all times together. So if we think about that, what do you think a to the power of 3 would be? This really becomes a times a times a. And y to the power of 2 would be y times y. So instead of writing out y times y, it's shorter to say y squared, and that means to us that we do have two y's times together. And just to illustrate, this is also very different from, for instance, big 3a. So a to the power of 3 is a times a times a, 3a times together. 3a is 3 times a, and this is different. This is like having an a plus an a plus an a. So that's 3a, literally means 3a's added together. And a to the power of 3 means 3a's times together. So if we want to simplify the following expressions, we're going to use this idea. Look at the first example. We've got b times b times b times a times a times a times a times a. So we're going to write it in power form instead. We're going to times all these together and write it out with power so there's less stuff to look at. So if we've thought about it, that a to the power of 3 is 3a's times together, how can we write 3b's times together? Well, that would be b to the power of 3. Now we want to shortcut those a's. So how many a's are there? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them. So we could say that that is a to the power of 5. Those bits are still times together. And to write our final answer, we'll do it into alphabetical order. And we're going to say a to the power of 5, b to the power of 3. What happened to my times? How come I didn't leave the times in there? This is another example of that tricky little invisible time sign. It really is saying a to the power of 5 times b to the power of 3, but we can write that as a to the power of 5, b to the power of 3 without the time sign. So in that first example, there were no coefficients. There were no big numbers in front. So we literally just counted up how many b's, and that became the power. So 3 b's times together becomes b to the power of 3, and 5 a's becomes five, a to the power of 5. In the next example, it's a little bit trickier because we've got both numbers, or coefficients, and the variables, or the letters in there. So first thing that we'll do is actually deal with the coefficients like normal. So if we ignore all the letters, we can imagine 4 times negative 2. Well, that we can do, right? Positive times a negative will become a negative, and 4 times 2 will become 8, so we have negative 8 from my coefficients. I'll also notice that I've got lots of x's and lots of y's, so I'm going to write x first in alphabetical order, and count up how many of them there are. 1, 2, 3 x's, so I'm going to say x to the power of 3. And then how many y's? 1, 2, 3. That will also be y to the power of 3. And you'll notice I have not put a time sign between any of those, because it becomes invisible when you have it between a number and a letter, or between a letter and a letter. So all of that, 4 times x, x, times y, times y, times negative 2, times y, times x, simplifies down to something much easier to say. Negative 8 times x to the third times y to the third. Or you can say x to the power of 3 and y to the power of 3. So again, times the big numbers of the coefficients as per normal, and then add up how many bases you have, and turn it into a power form instead of writing them all out individually.